Fuck dog eyes. <laughs> Winston owns this area. You fuck with us, and you'll regret it. Okay, okay. But please, make sure dog eyes doesn't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. Today we take a second look at one of my favorite game releases for Microsoft's Xbox 360 and Sony's PlayStation 3, Sleeping Dogs. At the time, I was not too open to open world games like Grand Theft Auto and others. I found that although so much to do, I would get boggled down in trying to do trivial things rather than enjoying the main story. The very first game to open my eyes that you can really have both was Sleeping Dogs. This one game really opened me up to just pure entertainment and helped me enjoy other games like Red Dead Redemption to RPG focused open world games like the Dragon Age series. Sleeping Dogs was developed by now defunct United Front Games and released by Square Enix in 2012 for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Microsoft Windows, and then released again for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 as a definitive edition. The game was also released for the Mac OS. With the newly released Frame Rate Boost update on the Xbox Series X, Sleeping Dogs was named one of the games that would receive an update to the core game that would allow 60 frames per second to the standard 30. I really wanted to see if the new 60 frames would give the game a new sense of playability as I love the responsiveness of many games that are now in 60 frames and how this would affect this 9 year old game. Replaying the game on the Xbox Series X brought back many memories as the game itself still maintains the hard-hitting, gritty storyline of an undercover cop trying to bring down the triads in Hong Kong, finding many roadblocks and adventures along the way. Addictive as the game was, the visuals still hold up in today's standards and can really shine with a great storyline and voice acting. All that is already known and expected. How does the 60 frames boost really help in the gameplay in this action adventure? Honestly, it feels good and smooth, but I couldn't help but feel like there was something missing. For some reason, I couldn't really put my finger on it, but has this game really aged that much where the awesome visuals have become somewhat subpar for me and the gameplay a bit sluggish as well? I had to find out with the ultimate backwards compatible software where you all you need is to have a better hardware system. And you can do this with Steam. I did not recommend the PC version of the game playing a year ago as the gameplay was inconsistent with hiccups on screen and frame rates just jumping all over the place. Well that PC died and now I have a new one with an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X processor with the same AMD 580 graphics card with a 64GB of RAM. Will this boost the game or give the same inconsistencies? I have to find out. I have the link to the retro review of the game a year ago in the info section if you would like to compare. After booting up the game with a similar SSD hard drive, I noticed right away that I was in for a treat. Even though the game wasn't higher than the Xbox One's original specs for the Definitive Edition, the differences were very apparent. The game ran at a silky smooth frame rate and just looked clearer, more vibrant, and that much more definitive. Hey man, and it was dog eyes they got her into? Yep. Fucking dog eyes. Uh, you gonna tell Winston? No. You? Shit, Wade. Winston's the boss. When we were kids, you were the only person who was nice to me. You were my best friend, man. That means more than a boss, you know? You need engine parts, adhesives. Next 
Next up on Ninja Tune Radio is the instrumental version of Ariel from Stateless, followed by two tracks from Brazilian beat adventurer Amon Tobin and Joe Double Click Chapman, known collectively as Two Fingers, titled Chem and Rhythm. Playing through, I was surprised how the extra power really took away all the issues I had playing on the PC a year ago. I can honestly say that for this game, the PC is the way to go if you have the power to do so. The visuals and the responsiveness just feel right and more immersive because of it. My graphics card is hardly top of the line and is already inadequate for gaming in today's generation, but it's crazy good with 1080p and 1440p games, especially retro ones like Sleeping Dogs. Although Microsoft may have increased the frame rate boost, this is one of the games I wish for a remake of some sort using the extra hardware power of the PS5 or Series X. At least for now, Steam's version of the game really does it justice with the right hardware. With the brand of Sleeping Dogs seemingly at an end with the closure of United Front Games, there is still hope for fans with Donnie Yen bringing the world to life with Wei Shin in an action-packed live-action affair as stated in 2020. That's it for this retro take two look at Sleeping Dogs for this Xbox Series X and PC. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. This week, I sent Jackie here to pick up the envelope and he tells my boy to fuck off. Apparently he's friends with dog eyes now, so we can all go fuck ourselves. You want me to make an example out of dog eyes? That home Garton is gonna get what's coming in. Right now, I need someone to take care of me. Damn. Keep, keep, who cares? My season climbing to the who's who here. Freestyle, so free in the style. Eat me, lean over the on a mile. Really be less of a candy. Less of a dandy. School guy, AA's like when it was Randy. Eat with the toys like a Mike in the Andy. Still got no brand.